me, your host, Martin Despang, is delighted to have you back to Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture, and uh, which happens to be our 248th episode. And you are our uh, 13,168th viewer. Thanks uh, for that. Uh, today, we're going to do something that is a tradition in our show to get us out into the world. Uh, and using me as to look above and beyond our uh, Pacific uh, Island isolated horizon at times. And so that gets us to the first slide. Uh, we had sent me for that reason uh, to uh, near Zurich, uh, Switzerland. And this is in some ways a, a follow up on what we had done already about three years ago, where we went to the same region here which you see as the more specific location here is Esslingen, which is in the outskirts of Zurich, about 20 kilometers away. And I'm here thanks to the hospitality of our friends, uh, Uli and Cordy. Thank you too for, for having us here. And we were venturing out and seeing what's new and what we can learn from potentially for back in Hawaii. So uh, let's start with, uh, I guess, the urban on that slide here. Uh, yes, at the very bottom right, you see a new development, which is called the Europa Allee, which is pretty much the, uh, where the train station, it's sort of an, an, a terminating uh, train station here uh, that doesn't go through, sort of a, you know, a dead end uh, rail, uh, a central rail station. And to the southwest of that, as an urban renewal project, uh, this uh, city, new part of the city was developed. It reminds us uh, quite some of Kaka'akao. So it's sort of uh, former uh, railroad tracks in that case. Kaka'akao was former industrial land. Uh, there is mid to high rise here. There's a mix of um, the goodies of uh, dwelling and working. And obviously through the pandemic, a little bit shaken up and at the bottom uh, floor is uh, is retail. It wasn't uh, quite as um, accepted yet from the people, the population, but now uh, when we went there and uh, Holly and Cordy invited us to a Korean restaurant has quite some flair. Uh, we went on a special day, which was Saturday and Saturday is a going out day anyways. And we here in temperate climate, uh, the temperature is roller coasting. We're rather in the chilly kind of 50s right now, rainy. But on Saturday, we had a Hawaii night with uh, up in the 80s, a beautiful, um, beautiful warm day when everyone was out and they all pulled out their fancy upscale cars. There's a lot to compare between uh, Switzerland and Hawaii. Both are uh, paradises for, for other people in the world. Uh, they both have Mauka and mountain ranges of different sorts. They both have water. Uh, there is the Zurich Lake here. Uh, all of that we talked about in the previous show, which we see at the bottom uh, in the middle at the bottom, uh, which is almost like, uh, you know, a hundred, more than a hundred shows ago because it was three, uh, three years ago. So a lot to compare. Uh, we compared uh, geology and ge geography, as I was just recalling. Uh, but today we want to talk a little bit more about that prosperity aspect again, that not only are we privileged as from what nature blesses us both in Hawaii as in Switzerland, uh, that attracts a lot of people. And then there we get competition. And obviously as it is in the human world, the tougher uh, one survives, and so the richer ones uh, sell out the islands. And here, uh, the little tiny country of Switzerland, which only has 41, a little bit more than 41,000 square meters with roughly 8.6 million living here, which is quite a lot. And that's why, why we have quite some density here. And that's something that we know very much from our islands, specifically on Oahu, where land is scarce and limited. Uh, and so the more people want to live there, the more density uh, we basically we basically get. So um, the circumstances of our times being, um, you know, uh, three fold um, of being climate change, uh, coronavirus and civility, 
uh, under threat by wars and uh, crimes against mankind. If we want to do the, the check on these, how uh, Switzerland is doing here, uh, starting with the, uh, the climate change, according to the Swiss themselves on a website called SwissInfo.ch, which stands for Switzerland. Um, they basically say uh, regarding their CO2 emissions, they say small country slash big footprint. So they're not doing too good. And that's, as they explain, elaborate on their website, uh, uh, thanks to consumption. There's a lot of consumption here and there's a lot of uh, import. And so that leads to a lot of waste. Um, also, again, in terms of transportation, although as we will further get to and the last two shows, some you know, 100 shows ago were titled uh, Transit Oriented Development, which is the topic on our island as far as developing out west. Uh, with public transportation, uh, there's still too much uh, air travel uh, here. And also the recycling isn't figured out the way it's supposed to be. There's a, there's a lot of homework to do. And that's a similarity, right? You think of this here being a very scenic, uh, you know, natural part of, of Europe, which it un, un, undoubtedly is. But uh, people here don't seem to treat it uh, equally to that sort of being blessed with it. And that's something that sounds very familiar to us because that's what we uh, increasingly talk about being the same as, uh, as in Hawaii. Coronavirus, uh, is, uh, there is no mask uh, mandate here anymore. It seems like Corona has never happened and we will see where, where that is going. Um, as far as um, civility has to do with prosperity, again, the uh, uh, the, which we already zoomed into the car at the middle of the of the of the right column there. This is a obviously an American car. This must be a Cadillac Eldorado, Fleetwood Eldorado from the early to mid '70s, somewhere in that range. Um, usually, the car is the one in the middle there, in front of the museum that we're going to talk about now. Uh, which is the Kunsthaus uh, in Zurich. This is a Bentley convertible. The, uh, the Fleetwood there, the Cadillac Fleetwood sort of reminded us of that Switzerland for several reasons seems to be what America was in its best days in, in mid century of the last century. A very prosperous land with, uh, you know, putting all its people uh, to, uh, to work, having a pretty low unemployment rate, everyone having been able to afford a house. That was a promise of the United States to its citizens. And Switzerland is in fact uh, able to uh, still do that, um, to make us uh, more jealous. Uh, the average income is roughly around almost 10K franken, which is their currency, what, because they refuse to join the uh, European Union, at least so far. Uh, there's uh, just recent attempts again of the sort of the equivalent of the Democratic Party to potentially change that, but as of now, it is like that. But there is currency uh, currently with the currency differences, there isn't much difference to the euro, nor is there to the US dollar anymore. So it's pretty much in the same range of US dollars. And the amount uh, that you need from your income for housing is uh, way less than we're used to in Hawaii, where it can be like a half or even more. And same in Germany, by the way. Uh, it's only one seventh, which our exotic escapism expert Susanna found out for us, who has a degree in business and then speciality in hospitality, but also in her interest in. Uh, her um, own experience of the Department of Bavarian Homelands, how she calls, um, you know, her own housing situation in Bavaria, where again, uh, same as in Hawaii with the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, where this uh, alludes to ironically as a term that we create, uh, people from the area have a hard time making a living because of the high cost of living there. So this is uh, this is an issue. Not so much in Switzerland. So when you come here with foreign currency and with foreign income, it's quite tough and it's quite shocking what things cost. But if you are uh, here and from here and you live here, it's a different deal. 
So the museum we see on the left, the middle and left part of this slide here is the Kunsthaus by the architect Ch David Chipperfield that we're referring to quite a bit uh, at the top right, a show quote with, uh, from a show with Jay called uh, Cynical Classicism, where we use the work of David Chipperfield as the point out cultivated cl classicism as the positive contrast to that. And myself uh, calling Chipperfield an informal mentor to me, and we, um, you know, occasionally and frequently um, uh, check out the newest work of him. So the Kunsthaus um, in the middle and to the left um, is uh, a, a one competition. Another thing that's very way different to America, where it's normally directly commissioned jobs or very sort of you know, a, com a competition, like a competitive, um, you know, uh, process between few architects, they're handpicked by the clients. Uh, there is a big uh, open competition uh, in Europe. Uh, this one here was from 2017, where Chipperfield won amongst uh, a, more, a little more than 200 competitors, and he won that bid. And uh, then it uh, took uh, until the end of 2020 for the museum um, to, be, to, be, to be completed. And ever since um, it's, it's open to the public and we have been uh, uh, visiting it. Um, talking about uh, neutrality. So we talked about prosperity and the uh, Swiss like to um, uh, play a neutral role. So neutrality is the term for that one and say, well, we, we don't really wanna take a position neither for this side, neither for that side. Um, that uh, sometimes presents a problem as uh, to at the bottom left, you see a book that um, is available in the bookstore of the museum that is titled, doesn't need much uh, translation because you can figure it out, contaminate, it uh, does contaminate the museum means the contaminated museum. And this author here, Eric Keller, points out that the large part of the, uh, of the artwork displayed is by an art collector with the name Bürle. And Mr. Bürle has been heavily sympathetic with the Nazis and, um, and uh, many of the, the artwork has been stolen from the Jews. And this is obviously a very, very touchy subject here that's very controversially discussed um, in, in the general public here and in the museum and is a hot topic that unfortunately is uh, sort of clouding a little bit the otherwise uh, really nice uh, museum by David Chipperfield that we might want to maybe uh, refer to and show you a little closer in, in future shows. Um, obviously, um, uh, this sort of, I guess, leading to the problem of integrity um, has uh, also a contemporary uh, dimension that's related to the threat to civility on a geopolitical scale. Because of that uh, attitude of neutrality, uh, the Swiss have been a paradise. There we go again, another comparison to our paradise in, in Hawaii in a way that it attracts uh, a lot of investors because it's very, very easy here. And also it's the traditional, uh, one of the utmost uh, traditional paradises of the Russian oligarchs that now one uh, is dealing with as, as a problem and, and finds it rather challenging. First of all, we might remember the Swiss even wanted to stay as neutral to even not join the sanctions of the uh, European Union uh, country, fellow countries, of course, they aren't part of the European Union, but that was sort of a too lame of an excuse. They realized that themselves and decided to join uh, the sanctions. So um, fittingly, uh, I guess, in the museum as a, as a place for education and communication, not only are they criticizing their own um, building uh, or the uh, exhibits in the building, uh, but at the top left, uh, there's a big banner of uh, an, in, an, an international um, artist campaign by the late Yoko Ono, who turned uh, 89 years young this year. 
So uh, John Lennon's wife, who used to be an artist before she met John and continues to be one, and her uh, initiative of um, Imagine Peace uh, couldn't be more timely uh, to be uh, displayed right now. Her exhibit is not up anymore, but uh, this sort of post exhibit, uh, you know, uh, uh, proposition uh, posters are basically uh, still up. So this is uh, uh, sort of in a nutshell, there's lots more layers here, as you can tell, um, of sort of touchiness and, and challenges. Uh, that it is sort of a paradise, probably not just on surface, but even below the surface. But again, the foundation of that paradise is not unproblematic. Um, as far as uh, homeless, again, talking about numbers and statistics, on that very tropical night there with all the fancy upscale cars out there, uh, we spotted few homeless, which um, Ollie was saying we were lucky to even have seen them because relative to the 8.6 million uh, uh, citizens in Switzerland, statistically only 2,200 people are formally statistically, uh, you know, recognized as homeless, but 8,000 more are basically endangered or are on the verge. So a total of 10,000 which is still sort of as a number uh, relatively small compared to, and they're not visible as much. Um, the, the Swiss uh, basically keeps up their, their, uh, their, their glitzy facade with, uh, and, and discussions with Oli, you know, um, I was told that once you might end up there because you lose your job, you get sick, you're not um, secured enough. It is equally uh, uh, challenging as it is in Hawaii, unfortunately. So the empathy to continue the why at the end, why words doesn't go that far, unfortunately, with uh, this with either to uh, make sure what the Hawaiian kingdom, by the way, just to remember that uh, everyone was taken care of, uh, no matter how weak you were in society, the culture pretty much uh, took uh, well care of you. Um, again, uh, the, uh, the, the shows in the past, some uh, 100 shows ago, um, at the middle, at the bottom, Michael, if you can go there one more time, uh, the first show was pretty much um, about, uh, you know, Zurich and Switzerland, sort of in general, and the second part was more zooming into the transit-oriented development, because that means you want to connect neighborhoods or parts of the city that were in previous connected. And so that gets us to the next and second slide. Um, this, um, again, at the uh, bottom right there is uh, the scenic view from Ali and Cordy's place, which is comprised of sort of a multitude of elements. In the foreground, you'll see something that is very familiar to us. Uh, while having talked uh, excessively, rightly so, about the work of Edward Killingsworth and Ron Lindgren and Larry Stricker and their work with their building integrated planter trough balustrades. And here we have one. This building is from the late 70s, uh, early 80s. Very nice uh, vegetated guardrail where Oli and Cordy are growing their herbs and their spices in there. Uh, and below it's open and naturally ventilated. And then we look at the distance at this little bluff. It's a little hard to see, but there is actually a cow there. So this is really out in the countryside. Although uh, that red thing there is a train. This is a commuter train that you can hop. Uh, that if you are you know, a stupid foreigner like us and you want to hop the train and you you pay at the ticket machine, it kind of rips you off. But again, if you're from here or if you're a little smarter than Ollie and I were talking, you can get a weekly rate or things like that. That also applies to the museum, by the way. Um, if you're smart and you, you kind of, you know, um, you kind of book bundles, uh, or again, if you're a local and take a year pass or something, the price is rather low. If you're like us and go there unprepared, uh, it costs uh, 30 bucks per person, but again, they're, they're, that's just us and maybe it's okay, you know, for people who just come here and want to enjoy, uh, nothing comes for free. 
uh, the kids uh, up to age 16, um, it's basically, basically free. So again, public transportation is a good backbone here. Uh, this uh, train here, the red train that we see there driving by um, is a traditional train that we talked quite a bit about in the past show. And the thing on the left, the large picture is uh, what in the few days we had here, we were blessed to have here, is actually the most um, impressive piece of architecture that we found that is tellingly not in the city. The Europa Allee that you remember from the previous slide at the bottom right is architecturally a little bit disappointing. It is uh, more or less fossil formalism. Um, again, um, the, the, the Switzerland has to do some more homework on uh, putting its sort of building stock uh, off the grid. So the buildings uh, might have been geothermally powered, but otherwise the consideration of orientation and passive solar, because this is temperate climate, gets really cold here. We are in at the foothills or in the in the view of the beautiful, you know, view of the of the Alps here. So uh, one one could see more of that. The project here uh, was really, really amazing uh, because it's uh, we were walking up this bluff and Oli, Oli showed me this project. It's very low key, very understated. Uh, it's a plinth of concrete with uh, the building then uh, constructed on top of that out of uh, solid timber, which is something we have talked about at Kelly Keanu's uh, thesis project, trying to do that out of coconut lumber on the island. And then we see something that um, DeSoto will like. Hi, DeSoto, who had to take a break today. Uh, that is the sort of fenestration that we always say should almost be the, the mandate for Hawaii, where um, you know uh, glass guardrails should be abandoned, as we say, and instead using, could be chain link fence. And this is in fact the chain link fence. Uh, a little bit of a nicer, a uh, little bit more upscale version that one of the uh, tenants in the building was happy to tell us about that that took a little while to be uh, brought in from Italy. But by the way, Italy isn't that uh, far away. Italy is pretty much next door here to Switzerland, right? So that's not, not a big deal. And the building uh, is a very sort of integral part of the landscape. And again, will soon uh, be taken over by nature, because of all these plants basically intended and welcomed by this chain link fence to basically grow, grow up on the building. So very, very nice sort of nature integrated, uh, very nice community uh, kind of blurred boundaries between uh, the private and the public. Uh, we were welcome to walk through. Uh, they have their own little uh, herbs and vegetable and fruit garden there in the building. Uh, it's comprised of, as the tenant was telling us, of rental units. There are two of them are owned. And uh, the architect uh, must be so happy and, and that he's brave enough to live in his own building that he designed. That I know from, you know, tradition can be problematic because then again, if then something goes wrong in the building, you know, the, the door to knock on is just too close. So this could be uh, rather stressful for an architect, uh, but only for the one who's not convinced that his building really works. So in this case, that seems to be the case. Who's also living there, um, seems related to the person we were talking to, uh, is the client of the project. So a really nice, uh, almost like co-op-like community Again, that just feels right. That's the quality we wish we would have uh, seen in, uh, in, in Zurich itself. And uh, that's something we continuously talk about that in order to uh, convince people like our exotic escapism expert, who is a country girl and loves her country, to convince her and others like her to basically go and move to the city takes us um, architects and urban planners to make the city like the country. And uh, again, we continue to share propositions polemically 
uh, you know, provocative uh, propositions, uh, how to do that. This is a good, uh, this is a good example here, uh, how to successfully do that. So I think uh, that's uh, it from my side about updating you from the other end of the world uh, in an area that has many similarities, again, geographically, um, uh, you know, uh, geology-wise, prosperity-wise, uh, profitability-wise, right? How do we basically deal with being a privileged place that um, draws uh, affluence and then how do we keep it uh, livable also for people who are less fortunate so a lot of things to uh, compare between uh, switzerland and hawaii of course keeping in mind uh, one is uh, tropical us in uh, hawaii and this one here is tempered making it more challenging, by the way, uh, supposedly making that more easy for us in Honolulu. Uh, I was on the phone with uh, Senator Stanley Chang, who uh, kindly takes on that issue to provide more social housing um, for us in Hawaii. And he's taking a delegation of experts to the neighboring Alpine uh, country of Austria for that reason in September. So that's great. Stanley, thanks very much for doing that. Okay, uh, that's it for today. Um, we're at the end of another 28 minutes of reflection and uh, we hope to see you back. The Soto already confirmed and we look forward to having him back to keeping all that in mind, uh, go back to uh, wrapping up our uh, volumes about the uh, area of the Ala Moana and its uh, midtown uh, uh, development, as they call it. Okay, until then, um, have a good uh, week. Uh, stay happy and healthy and keep uh, working with us on a planet and people friendly environment. Bye bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.